<laughs> you got it. All right. <laughs> this is the sounds of my insides. They are the stream of an echo. Good. Okay. Sure. This is the sounds of my insides. They are the stream of an echo. A million ways in which I earthquake and sing the beatitude of a million earthquaking bones. They are the color of my heart and its prehensile strings that sound when plucked like a thousand keys falling onto the floor and rattling the spirits of ghosts. Thank you. Um, okay. This is a not a breakup poem. I suppose it's a pre-breakup poem. I uh, yeah yeah. Here it is. Okay. To to what I should say, my now future wife of many years ago. It's called Nowhere. Two bone frames collide against one another in heat. And I do not wish to find the words, so I stutter on a page. Where do I run to when the words are too harsh for my own lips, too dry for my own heart? Where do I run to, to find solace in the heat of this very moment? Into myself, for there is nowhere else. Today, I collapse in on myself. I am rocks upon rocks upon rocks. I am a dense heap. I am heaps upon heaps upon heaps. I hide dark caverns which sink down many miles deeper than cold mountain bacteria or which grip the lungs of a man and make him crawl. Therefore, I will dwell here in order to suppress the coals of every emotion that rises and falls and lays fire to the crescent moon, which lays clammy fingers to my lungs, espouses a grip that makes it hard to move fingers on keys, to bring words into the earth and leave them too in a heap of more coal and ash. This is called at 2 a.m. At 2 a.m. One final question to the maker of all things, to the architect of all life, the creator of earth and moons and rocks. Why the hell am I still up? That's it. <laughs> this is called Why Have I Stopped Writing? Let the air out of me. Let my fingers slacken, flack, with sheets of music elapse, clack, clack, against oak yellow wood guitar, and find that place between myself in a moment without time and without walls. I have gone too long into a mountain in the east, you see. Gone, prayed beside the patriarch of the mind, without standing in the clay red street market, and dark and wet and mud alley walks. Without the sun of the waves of the blue sand land between my body here and tomorrow and my past, why have I let my feet stop roving, let the words meet a halt to stand on a roadway before some old 19th century cart tipped right on over? I know that this is particularly an unfair way of phrasing the complaint. But still, why have I? How have 10,000 years elapsed between those finitest lines of my life while for a moment solely I gandered at a small collection of boxes flung drearily onto a roadway? If we look, there we can see delicate china cups emptily clatter about and fragmentary pitter-patters of the January gravel. The cups pitter more emptily than the thoughts 
of that guru man from old movies for whom avalanche pause and occur because he bends the world when he sighs and fills it when he breathes. And so I tell you, I've gone too long. That is, I've laid too long away from the love which an older version of myself, who once stood beneath the cliffs, who once stood beneath the falls, told me like a cooing ancestral ghost to hold on to, from my own heart's shake while it beat beats, to hold on to, hold up to reedy papers while it shriek, shriek, shrieks, there out to ether while it heats, helps, heats, hacks, sleeps, slacks, slacks, beside my inside solely by doing what it does. My heart belongs here beside the moon and the shadow of my fingers past midnight, banging upon the 3 a.m. drums of low blue light and dreaming of the world beyond myself. I suppose that answers why I was still up at 2 a.m. now that I'm just connecting things together. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, Ezra Pound has a line, uh, for, I think it's from his contos, uh, one of the many contos in the poem, and it's, uh, it's called The Ant is the Centaur in his dragon world, the line of, in the poem, and um, I wrote a poem called The Ant is a Centaur in his Sandwich World. So I was eating a sandwich. Here it goes. <laughs> beehive, oh sorry, this is an extended metaphor. Let's just be clear right off the bat. <laughs> All right. Beehive earth littered with moles, elfin forest that is sturdy like a board. Rain-covered swamp filled with raw straw, sweet crayfish. White cranes stand like crooked pieces in the still water. Quietly, a crocodile waits in the waters to collapse his jaws onto living earth with 10,000 loathsome teeth. I am the crocodile. Lunch is good. <laughs> You guys can find the cheese and the tomatoes and the bread in there. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> if you're paying attention. I, uh, let's see, I'll go one more. Let's see. Um, okay, this is uh, hmm, it's a poem about fall. I'll skip it because my mom doesn't like it. She says, I completely, uh, this is it's a poem about Washington State. She says, I just completely missed it. She's like, you missed it. That's not Washington. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. You heard us. I tried to read it. Let's yes. See. All right, all right. I'll look at yeah, this. She's right up there. <laughs> you got it. I thought it was on the phone. I mean, I was there. I mean, I was there too. That's all that matters. Here it goes. <laughs> it's called Washington. Uh, in, in, I should say in September. Plum orange trees adorn roadsides. The sidewalks are white. The water is clean. This, this is Washington. The rivers ship their gold, azure blue cold out to Shiva's concave rib bone. This, the Shiva of the West. The lakes open for the swimming fish, and it is October and day. Fertility resides in this burbling water underneath the bridges near the lumpy logs and torpid rock beds. Its seedlings are everywhere. Trees are singing in a happy tree time. People are murmuring their murmurs. Women are floating, leaves loving. Here in fall, the colors call corn and flowers into the world to die. And moist winter waits always in the wind's chime. Ooh, wine. Chimes reside inside the fluting ochre throat of her and beat leaves from the stooping branches near the wood sides and the yellow lines of the roadways. And now the time is sublime, so they bellow a deep and colorful moan, the shape of a brown earthquaking tone. Amen. Um.